Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Ghost Ralph here. We just had a myriad of bands coming in Standard, in Pioneer, in Historic, and we even got one in Brawl. So just to jump into this real quick, there's also some gameplay in the background in case you've already seen. I'm sure a bunch of other people have already made this video before I've gotten to it, but I'll also throw it in a little T1 Glistener Elf flair, because this affects the deck that I like to play. And we'll get to that at the end. For Standard, it's Wilderness Reclamation, Growth Spiral, Teferi Time Raveler, and Cauldron Familiar. Now, Wilderness Reclamation is ridiculously played. Uh, they mention in here that it ends up being something like, what was it? They said, uh, <laughs> Growth Spiral decks made 68% of the day one metagame at the Players Tour Finals, and 25-30% to of the metagame at, okay, at, at Mythic Ranking on the Arena Ladder. And then for Reclamation, it's 54% uh, at the Pro Tour Finals, and 15 on the Mythic metagame. That's a lot. Now, I play Growth Spiral. Everybody plays Growth Spiral. Growth Spiral is good, you may have heard. You get to draw a card, you get to ramp, it's it's great, it's great. And the only restriction is you have to play the two most powerful cards in Standard right, or colors in Standard right now. That's not really a restriction. So, especially in conjunction with Wilderness Reclamation, that is a, that is a huge combo. Now, I have heard some people say that this is similar to, or I've seen some people, that it's similar to banning like Brainstorm in Legacy, where the card itself isn't necessarily too powerful, but it is format defining, so you may not want to ban it, especially since it's about to rotate anyway. Brainstorm is something like 50% of Legacy decks run it. It's, it's really good. Uh, but at the same time, you probably wouldn't think uh, you to ban Brainstorm just because it's played a lot. It is, or it'd, it'd be like banning Lightning Bolt in Modern or Popper. It wouldn't. It, it's format defining, uh, and Growth Spiral can end up being somewhat the same in my estimation. But it has a bit more utility than just drawing cards or killing a creatures or killing a creature. Eh. It gets to do. It gets to ramp you as well which accelerates you into a game plan that pushes aggro decks out, low to the ground aggro decks out. So I can understand it. Beyond that, Wilderness Reclamation is just busted. I, I slept on this card. When it first came out, I thought it was good. I didn't think it would be, what was it, 54% of the metagame at the, play, at the finals. Yeah, um, yeah, I did not expect that <laughs> at all. Uh, you, it makes sense though, think, thinking about it, if you can get to the end of your turn uh, after having already cast it, so you have a ton of mana to work with, anything that you can cast at instant speed or abilities you can activate at instant speed, you get to accelerate from at least 4 mana to 8, just like that. And couple that with the fact that you can run uh, Field of the Dead in the same deck, if you're, well we're, we're getting to that, we're getting to that, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, but yeah, so that's... Yeah, Wilderness Reclamation is really, really good. You may have heard. You may have seen. It's really good. Now, beyond that, Cauldron's Familiar is also kind of a card that I slept on. I saw, obviously, I saw Witch's Oven combo with it. I did not think it would be as good as it was, but they make a good point here that it sort of pushes low-to-the-ground aggro and mid-range decks out by virtue of it creates blockers that can constantly block every turn. Uh, it gains life, so it helps to work against aggro decks, and it creates this sense of inevitability. If you're not going to play a big growth spiral deck, then you can't, you're can't. you incentivized strongly to play a small Witch's Oven deck. And I just, I, I can understand why they do that. Uh, it's not even, with, with Witch's Oven you anticipate that you're going to have to lose a card in order to get the value of a food token or two. With Cauldron's Familiar, you do not have to do that. You keep getting the creature back. And obviously, with a card like Witch's Oven, you're expected to try to find ways to break that center, that uh, symmetry, not symmetry, to break that disadvantage, that downside. But it's a little bit too easy to do in this case. I can understand that. Now, Teferi makes a lot of sense. I am, I, I don't dislike playing against Teferi Time Raveler. Uh, I, I just don't. I think it's a fine magic card which puts me well into the minority, so that's number one. But then again, I also didn't like, didn't dislike playing against Thoughtseize either time I played it in Standard, so, or played against it in Standard. So I, I just have a high tolerance for what a lot of people consider to be broken strategies, which is fine, I suppose. Uh, but then, importantly, if Wilderness Reclamation is going to be banned, 
kind of have to do something about Teferi too, because part of the reason they were allowing it is that it held Reclamation decks in check. When they get to untap, if Teferi's out, they can still use abilities like, say, Spectral Sailor, but they can't cast cards at the end of their turn because of Teferi saying, no, you can't, Sorcery Speed only. So that actually helped to work against the archetype. However, in this case, <laughs> now that Reclamation is gone, Teferi looks to be positioned to be entirely too strong for the next couple months. So it makes sense that they want to do something about uh, Teferi as well. Now, going into Pioneer, oh boy, oh boy. So, <laughs> Inverter of Truth. Once again, I do not necessarily dislike playing against Inverter. Again, that puts me well into the minority, but it might also just be the case that I play decks that tend to play well against Inverter. Uh, Bogles, Land Destruction, things that uh, in the former case it gets around removal, in the latter case it hits them before they can get to 4 mana and can start getting their engine going. Uh, that's, that's just me. Most decks, however, are going to have a bit of a hard time. Obviously, Inverter is a good deck. It's a really good deck. And so, I can understand trying to hit Inverter. They talk about going after, say, like Thassa's Oracle or Jace uh, Laboratory Maniac to try to soft nerf the deck. Uh, but unfortunately, one of the issues with that is that Inverter can still win anyway. Um, so if you, if you don't ban both of those, uh, Inverter can still win. If you ban one of those, Inverter will still win. It'll just use the other one instead. And this is the same thing for Underworld Breach. You can either ban the Enabler, or you can ban one of the win cons with it, one of the potential win cons, or you can ban both. In Underworld Breach's case, it's actually even worse, because Breach can win without going to the end of its deck, say like with a, an Oracle. Uh, whereas Inverter, they have a big creature, and they can play other big creatures, and they can get... They want the cards that they play, and have in their graveyard before playing Inverter are probably good enough to be the cards that they want to find afterward. You get the idea. But that's... With Underworld Breach, it's much worse than that because they have a myriad. It's a choose-your-own-adventure deck once you actually get it assembled. All right, so that's that's another. Walking Ballista with Heliod Suncrown. You may see a theme here. It's combo decks. It, uh, Inverter is a combo deck, even though it feels like a mid-range deck at times. Uh, but it is a combo deck. Breach is a combo deck for sure. And similarly to, say, like Birthing Pod or uh, Devoted Company, Counters Company in Modern, uh, the Heliod deck can win on the mid range plan, but also has a combo backup that it can use. And as soon as, what, turn three, I believe, it can go off and just ping you to death. That's not fun. <laughs> That's not fun. I mean, I, I get it. The deck is the deck is really sweet. It's a little too strong. Banning Walking Ballista makes a lot of sense. It also hurts. It softly nerfs, nerfs a number of decks. Ballista seems like the kind of card that the bigger the card pool gets, the worse it gets. You need not look any further than, say, like Legacy or Vintage, where Ballista is definitely a card in both of those formats, especially Vintage. Uh, as the card pool grows and you have more options, uh, a creature that has a variable mana cost that can ping other creatures just seems like it just gets better and better as time goes on. Uh, and then Kethis the Hidden Hand is another combo enabler. It's the most recent of them and I don't understand it to be honest. It is silly. Uh, it's a silly combo. I, I, I get that part. But uh, yeah, Kethis is, Kethis is one of those that they anticipate being uh, too strong. There's another instance from a, uh, a standard I want to say about a year ago, where they hit, I think it's Marauding Raptors, the 3-3 three, three Menace No Life Gain uh, dinosaur. Why? Because they were anticipating it being too strong, and so they, they banned it. You know what? Fair enough, I suppose. And if they expect that Kethis is going to be too much, fair enough. Uh, then we have, for Historic, Wilderness Reclamation and Teferi Time Raveler. It's largely a repeat of what we saw in Standard. We still get to play Growth Spiral, though, so I'm still going to play Growth Spiral for as long as I can. And then in Brawl, Teferi Time Raveler, for much the same reason. It sees about 10% or more of its play, of the of play in the format, and it wins an awful lot. Yeah, over 10%, it says. So, ban a card for being too ubiquitous and too strong. I get it. And that's that's the announcement. So, 
With all this being the case, it goes into effect immediately, so by the time I've told you, it's already up. It's already happened on Arena, for instance. Uh, well, how does this affect me? Well, I play Land Destruction. I play Garuda Land Destruction. I've made a deck tech on it, I'll have to make another one to accommodate the fact that we don't have Growth Spiral anymore. And Growth Spiral is certainly one of the better cards in the list. When you hit turn one, you play a tap land, fair enough. When you hit turn two, you play either Paradise Druid, Hexproof, so usually won't get killed, and then on the next turn you'll be able to play Land Destruction, or God Eternal Kefnet, or you play Growth Spiral, play another land, draw another card, and then you know, play Land Destruction or Kefnet on the next turn. Growth Spiral is the better of the two. Uh, it's not a creature, so you don't have to worry about it getting killed, okay, but it's also going to draw you a card, so it's a better top deck later in the game, and it works with God Eternal Kefnet. You play it on your opponent's turn so that you get another first card you draw this turn trigger. And hopefully that means that you can find another land destruction spell. Easy enough. What will we do instead? The answer is probably, almost certainly, do what we did before, which is to play Incubation Druid. One of the things that I try to do when I play land destruction in Standard is have your ramp double as your win con, if possible. There are some instances where that can work. I, for example, previously ran Gruel Land Destruction in uh, Battle for Zendikar through Eldritch Moon, Wh wherever that one went. That one went for a while. <laughs> and I thoroughly enjoyed being able to go into uh, a 4-6 uh, late in the game. It was Uvenwald the Defender that makes green mana, but you can uh, you can transform it into an Eldrazi. And a 4-6 is big enough that it can serve as a backup win con. It's not the end of the world, it's not what you want to rely on, but it's nice to have ramp double as a way to actually close out the game, or at least defend you. It's a little bit less so for Incubation Druid. It's a 3-5 instead. And while it makes more mana, by the time that you're able to have that much, you don't really need more mana. It's Fine, I guess you take a Gilded Lotus on a 3-5 creature, that seems okay. But 3-5 is enough below 4-6 that it might not really be all that great. But looks like I don't have much of a choice, I'm going to have to try it out. There are some other options as well, none of which seem to work as well in my estimation. So like, for example, Druid of the Cal only makes green, but hey, it's a 3-toughness creature, you can block with it for a while, maybe, hopefully. But it doesn't make mana of any color. Uh, so I can give I can give it a shot. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there's something else. It is Garuda, so I don't get Beanstalk Giant. And even if I did, that doesn't give me turn three land destruction in a list that can't run land or else. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. If we're able to play this in Historic, we do get access to Growth Spiral again. We don't have to play Garuda. We could go turn one land or else, turn two Beanstalk Giant and then turn three land destruction again. Is that better? Well, I mean, it gives you something to do on turn one, and you're not constrained by the companion restriction anymore, at least not that particular companion restriction. You could still run another, potentially, uh, but what would you run? I'm actually not sure. If you want to give up, if you're okay with giving up a God Eternal Kefnet, then you could play, or Ravager Worm. Well, of course, there's no Garuda, so there's no Ravager Worm anymore. Then you could play Gigantha the Wellspring, that's a nice little 5-5 in your hand all the time. But then you'd be giving up playing more than one land destruction spell a turn and doubling your lava coils and scorching dragon fires and growth spirals and things like that. All right. If you have any... Uh, how has this affected you? If you have any thoughts for my land destruction deck, that's, that's fine, great. But how is this affecting you? Or are you one of the people playing Reclamation? <laughs> if so, what are you playing now? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> All right, that's it. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.